my name is Dr Zoe Williams and I'm an NHS GP and I also do quite a bit of work in the media so I work on ITV's This Morning and BBC Trust Me I'm a Doctor and also write for The Sun newspaper. I think most people are aware that air pollution, certainly high levels of air pollution, are detrimental, harmful to our bodies. But I imagine most people would be quite surprised to learn to what extent. I think we, we know that we're breathing in air pollution, so therefore highly likely that it affects our lungs in a negative way, which it does. But also it can make it into our bloodstream, so it can affect our heart, it can increase our risk of things like stroke, it can even affect our brains and neurological system. In fact, it can make it into pretty much every organ of our body. So air pollution, it's something that's been on the rise as the years have gone on. It's something that is relatively new to, to be experienced in such high levels of air pollution. So there aren't many generations before us in which we've seen the effects, but we're learning more and more that it, you know, essentially is one of the biggest killers that we face in our lives. Where I work as a GP, it's inner city London, it's in an area of deprivation, there are main roads, they're big high rise flat built flats um, all built up, very highly overly populated. Um, and we have high levels of lung disease and heart disease and type two diabetes. And, and a lot of my patients have quite difficult, stressful lives. So it's impossible really to pick apart how much of their ill health is due to air pollution. Um, but we know, scientifically, we know that as a society, as a population in that area, air pollution is bringing down the quality of life and the health to that whole population. So there will be people who probably would have had lung conditions or heart conditions anyway, the air pollution is exacerbating it and making it worse. And those people may, you know, have a heart attack or have a stroke and die years earlier than had they lived in an area where the air was clean. Air pollution can affect children in a number of ways. First and foremost, it can affect children's lungs, especially children who have asthma. It can make their asthma much worse. It can make them have more asthma attacks and make their asthma more severe. But actually, all children, it can even affect the way in which the lungs grow and the way in which the lungs develop. Um, and, you know, we know that air pollution, we breathe in the chemicals, we breathe in the toxic gases, and then they get into our lungs and they get into our system. But air pollution can even affect babies before they've taken their first breath. We know that a lot of those toxins can cross the placenta from mother to her unborn child. And as you know, as science develops and we learn more and more, we are seeing that those effects start before a baby's even born. The way in which their lungs have started to develop and, and the risk of them having asthma in the future already the amount of air pollution that they've been subjected to could have made a difference. The commonest health problems which we would link to air pollution are things related to the lungs. So things like asthma, COPD, also lung cancer. It has been shown that long-term exposure to high levels of air pollution can even increase our risk of lung cancer. And then also the, the sinuses, so the nasal passages and the throat, um, which makes sense because we're breathing in the air pollution. Um, but because those pollutants can also get into your bloodstream, they can affect your heart, they can increase your risk of heart disease, increase the, increase the risk of you having a stroke. And it goes further than that, they can affect the brain as well. So in more, more recent years, air pollution has been linked to, in children, things like brain development and learning ability and concentration and sleep and all of that comes into it. But also towards later in life, air pollution has been linked to cognition, memory problems, and even dementia. As a GP, I see more people affected by allergies than ever before. And there are many things outside that can cause allergies like pollen and hay fever, um, but also people can have allergic responses to a lot of the pollutants, air pollutants. And that's not just interesting, it's not just outdoors, it's indoors as well. I think we tend to think of outdoor air pollution, so from combustion, from, from cars, from aeroplanes, um, but even in our own homes, 
there's a lot of pollution, there's indoor air pollution. And sometimes that is the stuff that's coming in through the doors and the windows from outside, but also things that are coming from inside. So when we're cooking, um, particularly for burning food, try not to burn our food, um, but from candles, from aerosols, from sprays, from all the chemicals that we use in our house, whether that's hairspray or furniture polish, all of those are giving off air pollution as well in these fine, tiny little particles that can be inhaled. And if they're very, very small, can actually go beyond the lungs and into the, into the bloodstream. We're learning more and more at the moment about what are the long-term impacts of air pollution and being subjected to high levels from before you're born all the way through to later in life. You know, in some people, it may not make a huge difference if that person is fit and healthy anyway. The people that will affect the most are those that already have underlying health conditions. So particularly people who have things like asthma, um, COPD, which is chronic obstructive airways disease, um, or people who have heart disease, the added effects of air pollution in those people can be really, really significant, as in, you know, even mean that they, they die prematurely, they die younger than they would have done had they not been exposed to the air pollution. But, you know, for all of us, we know that being exposed to air pollution is bad for us. Um, and although some of us might be able to get away with it if we're very, very healthy, it can even impact on things like quality of life. So we know that high levels of air pollution can affect sleep quality, um, can affect concentration and therefore your ability to do well at school or you know, achieve optimal um, a, a cognition when you're at work. So all of us are affected. The long-term health effects to some degree we're still figuring out, but more recently, very interestingly, we have seen this link between air pollution and things like uh, memory loss and dementia later in life. When it comes to us protecting ourselves against air pollution, I think the most important thing is having awareness. It's something that it's such an important risk factor. Um, we know that it takes years off people's lives, yet there's very little done about it. We don't talk about it. We, you know, we know that smoking is really, really bad for us. Um, and we talk about that, we're aware of that, and we've all been educated about that. But I think that the education is lacking when it comes to air pollution. We know smoking is much worse for you than air pollution, but actually air pollution has been compared to something like passive smoking, because it is really very bad for us. The first thing is about educating ourselves, talking about it and being aware of it. Secondly, there are some simple things that people can do to try and reduce um, how much air pollution they're subjected to. And we can sort of break that down into outdoors and, and indoors. I mean, if you live in a busy city, especially if you live on a busy main road, you are being subjected to high levels of air pollution. So trying to, as and when you can, when you're outdoors, stay away from the major roads as much as possible. So if you're on foot or if you're a cyclist, taking quieter roads or walking through green spaces will protect you from air pollution. Even walking on the pavement the further side away from the road rather than right next to the road can make a difference. If you are using um, your car, being sat stationary in traffic is just about the worst thing you can do because that's when you're sat in a pit of air pollution. So minimizing using your car and walking or cycling where possible, not only does that help reduce the air pollution that everyone's subjected to, but it also reduces your own risk of being exposed. Um, ideally, we'd all live in nice countryside away from air pollution, but of course, that's just not possible. So taking little steps to reduce the doses of air pollution every day can make a big difference overall. And then there's indoors. So there are indoor air pollutants as well. Having plants, plants are really helpful. Not only do they look nice, but they actually absorb some of those toxic chemicals and particles. So having lots of plants at home is a good thing to do. Trying to not use too many aerosols if you can. So if you can use sprays instead and use natural products for cleaning rather than chemicals, 
that can reduce the exposure indoors as well. Um, there are air purifiers that you can get that are on the market now, which can help reduce some of those toxins from the air as well. And opening a window when you're cooking, particularly if you're cooking something that creates a lot of steam and smoke. So opening a window um, and using the extractor fans, those are just a few tips things people can do in day-to-day -day life to try and reduce their exposure. We're all wearing masks much more now. Um, and there is a possibility that, that mask wearing might reduce some of our exposure to air pollutants as well. It doesn't protect us so well against the toxic gases that we might be exposed to, but might add some protection against some of those fine particles that we breathe in. I think that we have a responsibility as a community, as society, as individuals, but, you know, our government, we need to look at ways to make sure that everybody is breathing cleaner air because our children who are being born today, my little boy was born 12 weeks ago. We live in London. By the time he's an adult, we're living in, you know, we're living in uncharted territory with these levels of air pollution. We just don't know what impact that is going to have on on the health of of, people, of our children, you know, adults of the future. So it's really important that we act now. It's already too late. We're already acting too late, but it's really important that we take action now. And I think that starts with people educating themselves, talking about it, understanding it.